Ron Eons. Do you have that guy in the show? I don't, but that's a good mention. Ron Yans. Oh, Ron Yans. Dude, Ron Yans is going to open up the most baller schnitzel spot in five. I was Cincinnati. actually thinking that Ron Yans is probably going to open up like a flip flops and <laughs> sunglasses shop. <laughs> sure. Oh, from New York, New York, you are listening to Extra Time, driven by Continental from the AT&T MLS Studios in Midtown Manhattan. I am Andrew Wiebe, and these are some people I sit around with and talk soccer. Oh, because don't it's give fun, up on that. And sometimes oh. I like them. Oh, you're going to let Charlie get in your head just with one appearance? Uh, you know, I liked partners in soccer, but I was going to do different little bits off the top, but now you guys don't like that, so I guess I bring it back. I mean, I can't please everyone. It's so difficult just being pulled in every direction. I actually kind of liked partners in soccer. Yeah, yeah so he I. was doing that as a test, man. Yeah, he wanted man. to see if you were going to get shook. Wow. Yeah. You wow. failed. So I tried <laughs> to take his bit and turn it into another bit, and in doing that, I completely overthought everything, and Charlie wins. That's the uh, that's the lesson does. we get right now. You're so soft. Oh. I'm soft as well. That is the other lesson. I admitted that. I wore a poncho on the field in Orlando with a scarf over me. So clearly, yeah, Dave, I'm soft. You let the rain just come down on your head. We got a big show let for you. Let the rain fall down and nope. wash nope. away. Nope. Don't do that. Did not nope. expect that, to be honest with here, you. Guys. Week 22 Just for anyone coming. not watching on video, I sang that directly into Doyle's uh -huh. eyes. Right into his eyes. Atlanta United. They're going to be okay after all if they get to play teams that don't have their best player. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But Zlatan wasn't there, and they won at home in the record crowd. Over 72,000, that's another record for them in Major League Soccer as far as the regular season is concerned. LA Revs, Prairie Dog Plagues, that's probably my favorite three-word phrase from the weekend. Uh, transfer window, Aaron Long wants to move, apparently. The Red Bulls don't want to let him move. We'll talk through that one. And Christian Pavone is coming, and maybe, maybe not. It's still not confirmed, but he is what? He's on social media, Dave? posting photos youth of jerseys. mini jerseys. Yes. <laughs> He's potentially hosting right. a youth charity event. Otherwise, he might play for the LA Galaxy. He's Unconfirmed. He's like going to play for the U15s. He's yeah. yeah. really good at that level. Hey, yeah. listen. Oh, could be. A little gender reveal there. Listen, <laughs> the Galaxy are trying to pump their academy a little more. You got to bring in a the, guy. Like yeah, play the kids. We always say it. Open Cup semis are this week. There will be a new champion. That's cool. Inter Miami might hire Gattuso? What? Yeah, sometimes uh, maybe good. So, sometimes <laughs> maybe good. But sometimes maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. That's definitely the word he said. And then we well, the mail guarantee bank. one club that we won't talk negatively about at any point or squad. Oh, that's true. The, everything's great. There, would not tomorrow. be a scarier person no. to bring. To the <laughs> no. yes, How long do you think you would last in a fight versus Gattuso, David? Me? Yeah. I think actually he's our best bet at this table. So here's the thing. <laughs> I'm, my assumption is once Gattuso has you down and out, he continues. Yeah. So most of the fight I'd be unconscious for, <laughs> but I actually think it would last for a pretty long time. Uh, we, yeah. we sat there and watched Simeone. We sat next to each other oh, at the right, All-Star yeah. game the whole match. I mean, I was afraid to look wrong or to have the wrong impression right, or, the body or reaction. Language. Yeah. He's like, you don't look committed there. No, I was front row, really? but he keeps you on your toes. It was like 87th minute of an all-star game, and he's yelling at his squad, get compact, get compact. <laughs> well, I actually wanted to go up into the box and, you know, maybe have a nice quesadilla or something because I, I was finished with work by, by <laughs> half time. But I was like, no, Simeone's going to think I'm soft if I leave the rain right now. Like, I can't do this. I got to stick this out. Just glad he didn't see me in that poncho. Uh, look, before we get to all the things that happened on the field, there's something that happened on and off the field, and I think you probably know about it. Ali Bedoya on the FS1 broadcast, Philly and D.C. on Sunday night. Uh, we'll just kind of start from the top here. There's tragic context here, and I think uh, I have to explain it, I guess, but I'm sure most of us are well aware of it. Mass shootings this weekend in El Paso and Dayton left 30 people dead, many more wounded. Shook the nation. It certainly shook me. I'm sure it probably shook you guys as it has many of my family and friends. The count's now 251. That's how many mass shootings we have in 217 days now. It's a new day today on Monday in the United States. Uh, that set the stage on Sunday night. Nation's capital, Alejandro Bedoya. He made his voice heard, man. Third minute, banks in the opener off the post. He finds Elsino's mom, celebrates with her, celebrates with his teammates, then turns, and I didn't know what he was doing, and all of a sudden you do because he goes and grabs the field-level mic and he yells, clear as day, you can hear it on the FS1 broadcast, quote, Congress, do something now, end gun violence, let's go. Uh, it, it was a moment that I think in the soccer world reverberated immediately, and as the night went on, I saw it reverberating out more and more into what you might say is, I don't know, the mainstream in oh, some ways. Past our soccer yeah, bubble. Yeah, our little bubble. Yep. Bedoya, for those of us who've watched his career, um, 
aren't surprised. He's got a history of being outspoken and outspoken on this topic in particular. He was vocal in his support for the students community at Parkland. Uh, that's where he near he grew up in Florida just last year. Uh, here's what he had to say after the game. Quote, for me to see that happen again, speaking about these mass shootings, again this morning, another incident in two days, 30 people dying. It's absurd, man. He was visibly shook up, according to reporters who were there. I'm not going to sit idly and watch it happen again. Before I'm an athlete, before I'm a soccer player, I'm a human being first. This stuff affects me. I've got kids. I can't be the only one here who's dropping kids off at school or who's thinking about an exit strategy when I'm at the mall or at the movie theater, at a concert or festival down the street, any big gathering. Something's got to be done. It's gotten to the point where we've almost become numb to it, and that's a big problem. After the match, his head coach, Jim Curtin, came out as well and very publicly backed up his player. Quote, I'm on Alejandro's team on the Philadelphia Union, and I'm on Alejandro's team in support of his views on gun control. Things need to change in this country for sure, and I'll support anyone who speaks their mind and is intelligent and fo informed on it anytime. Jim said, that's Alejandro. He is both those things, and he's passionate. Bedoya will not be suspended or fined for his celebration. Major League Soccer's statement on this Monday is this, quote, the Major League Soccer family joins everyone in grieving for the loss of lives in Texas and Ohio, and we understand that our players and staff have strong and passionate views on this issue. Bedoya proved that. I think we would all agree that we have some of those views as well. The Players Union, Executive Director Bob Foose backed up Bedoya uh, as well, saying that uh, on behalf of all those players, I want to express my full support for Alejandro Bedoya's exercise of free speech. So those are... Those are the, the facts. That's the context, and that's where we will begin our discussion here. Kaylin, I think we will start with you. If anybody hasn't watched the movement or heard you promote the movement on this show, uh, there's a new episode coming out that should be great, but we'll save that for a different day. Uh, you are um, very passionate about athletes, endless players, using their voices and using their voices to talk about things that they're passionate about and may not always be easy subjects. What did you think when you heard this, when you saw this? What have you thought in the, I don't know, 14, 16 hours since as you've kind of internalized it? Yeah, well, I, I think, yeah, first and foremost, you're right. This is not an easy subject to talk about. It's not easy because... Uh, first of all, it hurts. It hurts. I think it hurts everybody. It's sickening to, to hear that this is continuing to happen in our country. And it's not easy for an athlete to step out and say something in the manner that he did um, and at the moment he did. <laughs> um, and so first, I just give Ale a ton of respect. I, I know Ale personally. Um, and this felt real. It felt very raw. It felt something that he... Um, had thought about, has, has thought about a lot, and stepped forward to say that. And that takes a lot of courage because we have seen in, in uh, athletes in general having to suffer consequences, and, and I know it's scary to step out there and do that, which is why I commend him even more. I, I reflected back to 2012 when I was playing in Houston and the Newtown shooting happened, and our team president at the time, Chris Kennedy, is from Newtown, and invited some of the first responders um, to the school shooting there, um, to Houston. And they came to the locker room and we met them before the game, we met them after the game, we hosted them and their families. And just to like, to meet people that had been there um, during those horrific moments at that time and to, un to even try and wrap your mind around what that could have been like or what that was like for that community and to have our team president from that community uh, really hit home. MLS responded and, and went there and I know Landon and a bunch of people went up there and, and really put on a clinic um, as well. And, and to me, it was just, I, I didn't know what to do with those feelings, you know, at the time. And I, I didn't really feel like I had the voice or the profile or, or, or maybe even the courage. There was, a, there was a gun show recently afterwards in Houston. I went to it expecting there to be some type of protest or something. There was nothing. Um, and... I did that in, pri in the privacy of, you know, just being a citizen um, and living and being concerned citizen. Uh, but that broke my heart, you know? And then you fast forward last week at All-Star, uh, the uh, Design FC is a program in Chester that uh, started there and uh, they were honored at halftime representing the union. and. They went at halftime. This program's amazing. They basically started a program for kids in Chester, which, by the way, it has the second highest, uh, uh, you know, homicide rate in the country at at certain points over time or over a long portion of time. 
And the kids there are designing their own uniforms. And Warren Craval is involved, as well as this guy Omri, um, who's an awesome kid, who's really doing well for their community there. But these kids have no rules, and they're designing their own soccer kits. They don't really have a big reference as far as what a soccer kit's supposed to be. That's part of the whole thing of expression, self-expression. And these kids, I see the photos of it, and they say, stop gun violence. They're putting that on the, sh on the kits. It's like, these kids are in middle school. That's hard, you know? And so I didn't feel like I had the courage at the time to step out and say something, uh, or the profile, or whatever it was, uh, I was afraid. So when I see MLS players stepping forward now and doing this, that's incredible, you know, it's really, it's really important. And I think as MLS grows, as the profile grows, as, as, as the money grows, because that's a part of it too, the media attention, this is going all over the place. And so I, I'm just really proud of Ale um, for doing what I, what I felt like I couldn't. I would echo that feeling of pride in knowing that someone took the opportunity and said, you know, I, I believe this. It needs to be said. I will be the one that says it. And he obliterated the Sticks to Sports, frankly, BS that uh, so often accompanies these sort of conversations in our culture and in other cultures as well. Um, I, I thought he, he delivered in the moment. For him to do it as he scored a goal was a little bit poetic in itself. You know, I have the stage. What am I going to do with my stage? Well, this is what I'm going to do, and now it's spreading far and wide. Uh, I know that you have some personal um, some, some personal experiences on this subject, Doyle, and, and it, it really it drives home for you. It, it does. And, and for, for Ali, not just to have the, the courage to say what he said, but to go out of his way to do it. This wasn't just... He was in the scrum afterward, and he got asked a question. He, he took leadership, um, and he used his platform in a way uh, that I imagine was very difficult and a little bit frightening. Um, and, and you're right, Weeby, I, I have, I mean, two of my friends were murdered. Um, my friend Nicole was murdered in the street 15 years ago, um, and, and my friend Kim was killed at Pulse. Uh, and... I was really proud of Orlando City for how they responded to the Pulse shooting, um, the Pulse massacre. Um, and being, you know, the, this past week was my first trip to Orlando. So, um, you know, seeing, seeing the nightclub itself and then seeing um, what's at the stadium and how they've kept that memory alive is it, emotional. It's, it's, it's really meaningful. Um, uh, and... Then listening to Ali's work, like, you know, as, as impressed as I was by what he did during the game, I thought what he said afterwards, um, it really hit home for me because I've had this discussion. With, you could probably guess which side of the debate I come down on here. I've had this discussion with friends and family and just random people online. Um, and in, in the so often it's like, well, it's, it's not going to work. If you, if you just add this step, it's not going to work. It's not going to end gun violence. But yeah, it's not. There's nothing that is 100% going to end it all at once. But we can take steps, and that's what Ale was asking for. And he talked about it uh, afterward. He actually talked about it in the scrum. You know, he said, I'm not going to sit idly by. I can't... Like, I can't just let this happen over the course of my life. And then he talked about talking to a friend's father who was like, this isn't, you know, this isn't going to work. These laws aren't going to end it all at, completely. And, and Bedoya's response was, well, then what? We're not going to have any laws? We shouldn't have a speed limit? And like, that resonated with me because we do have to start somewhere. We do, and I, and I hoped it would happen 20 years ago after Columbine, and I hope it would have happened 15 years ago after Nicole was murdered, and I hoped it would have happened in 2012 after Sandy Hook, and I hope it would have happened, you know, after Stoneman Douglas, and I hoped it would have happened after Las Vegas, and I hope it would have happened, you know, after the, the synagogue in Pittsburgh, and I hope it would have happened after this week. You just... I think the blank there is, is what we all sort of know, unfortunately, at this point, to be the inevitable, which is another another name, another location, another occurrence. I mean, as Ali said, something's got to be done. It's gotten to the point where we've become almost numb to it. That is, you know, certainly the, the incidents themselves are the are 
the big problem, but that is the perpetuator there. And I'm with Ale when he says, look, when I walk around, I start thinking about exit strategies. And I never did that before. I don't remember ever doing that, but I'm sitting on the subway this morning thinking that, glancing around, saying, this could happen to me right now. Nothing could, nobody could stop it. It's right here. And, and something can stop it. Not completely, as you said, but any one person, any life, there's sanctity here, and, and sometimes that's what's so sad. And I'm listening to your story, and I'm seeing the emotion expressed, and I'm, I'm tearing up here on Extra Time because, you know, sometimes I think we just kind of bury it, you know, how much it actually does affect us or our families or people we know. And even if you don't know, to see life lost like that is – it's unacceptable. It's a moral it sickness. destroys entire community. It's unacceptable, and, and something – Something's got to be done. I won't sit here and say I'm the expert that knows exactly what that is because I'm not. But we have them, and we have we have more than enough reasons. The one thing I'd say is, it Alejandro Bedoya made his statements last night. And you think about it over the course of the hours, and one of the things I thought about was one, you know, how brave it was for what he did and to push that conversation in there. And it almost gives everyone an excuse now when you go to work and when you go hang out with friends for the foreseeable future to talk about this, which is something that I felt like, and you talk about after Newtown and all the times you hoped that this would end, that this conversation has ended because it felt like it's a losing battle, but there's been some renewal in life in this battle. And what Alejandro Bedoya is doing is, here's an excuse to go talk about it. Make sure you stick it in people's faces. Don't stop. So I ask people to continue to be brave, just to con continue to bring this up and try and fight for it. And the other is to support guys like this. You talk about MLS guys, the little things we can do in life. One is if there are leaders in your MLS teams, in the clubs you support, in the leagues you support, support them. Cause that's what clubs will see. That's what, you know, the big top dogs will see is if this is a player where he's speaking out and people are responding to it, then it's going to become okay. Or then it's going to become more acceptable. And that's something we need. We need leaders in our community. Uh, the last thing I'll throw out there is, you know, we mentioned the two shootings this weekend in El Paso and Dayton. Uh, there was a, a youth soccer team that was raising money outside of the Walmart in El Paso where the shooting occurred. Two of the coaches were shot. Uh, the club's name is El Paso Fusion SC. And people are raising money on GoFundMe to help them raise the money they were trying to raise for their, uh, for their equipment, for their youth club. So I think we'll put it out there on social media. But I encourage anyone to share that information, to go donate and, you know, it feels sometimes like helpless, but it's the little battles that we continue to try and fight and try and push. I'll end it here before we move on to the soccer, which feels extremely small in comparison. This is a quote from Ali Bedoya last night. Quote, before I'm an athlete, before I'm a soccer player, I'm a human being first. I feel that one. I feel that one, Ali. All right, uh, let's move on. Uh, week 22, the union. 5-1, man. 4-0 last week. <laughs> nice goal. So, take over for me, all right? <laughs> Give me a second here. Philadelphia Union lost 4-0 to Montreal last week in MLS action. And then this week they rebound. DC United, it's a huge game. Obviously, it starts with Alejandro Bedoya's first goal. Uh, they moved on from there, though, and scored five more. They went man up. Chris Durkin comes off with an injury. But when you look at the Union, Jim Curtin's trying to test his team. He's trying to learn who they are. This was a pretty big result for them, whether it's man down or not. It was. It was, it was getting out of a funk, right? Because if you look at the past couple of months, they were 4-4-4, four, four, and four, still good enough to stay like at or near the top, but they hadn't been playing like they did. They went on that two-month run from March to May where they were easily the best team in the Eastern Conference. They hadn't been that team for a while, and then it felt with this one – like maybe they were that team again, getting healthy El Sino back for the final 30 minutes, getting Montero back or Mar Jamiro <laughs> Montero back for the you know he looked not 100 percent, getting Wo uh, Wooten sort of involved a little bit. Like I, it feels like they pushed through those midsummer doldrums, and now they are ready to be the team they were. How much I, I enjoyed the game, loved watching it. Good for the Union. How much of that is red card after they're up one nothing? How much of that is DC United have won two games since May 12th? How much of that is DC have won two games since May 12th? <laughs> like, is, this a, is this a Philly? Yeah, I get that. I get that. That's Eastern Conference right now. There isn't one great team that has it all put together. So for Philly, if they're imperfect but good, they could be the best team in the Eastern Conference. There's nothing wrong with that. I think this is a conversation that we've had a couple times on this show, but it doesn't feel like there's a TFC of 2017 or Not even a close. Red Bull or Atlanta 2018. So I think with the way that the sticks we're using to judge clubs in 2019, and I don't think teams are worse, but there isn't one super team. Uh, you have to change. You have to adjust the way you view it. In the East, you're saying. 
Because it, it's yeah, LAFC, LAFC for sure. that measures up with those. But everybody else is kind of down here fighting in a pack, punching 1. each other 6, in the 6, face. 1.6, 1.7 points for the yeah, game. Yeah, just to yeah. like... Nobody gets on a streak. No. Yeah. DC United, you know, they I felt think solid. They, they did. No, they um, don't. They do not. And, and, like, the body language on the of the players on the field tells a ton. Ben Olsen has, has tried to go to a five-back system. I don't think it's really been working that well. They they haven't they don't have d- dynamic passers of the ball out of the back and if you have three center backs and none of whom are really good passers of the ball, your midfielders aren't going to be getting on the ball in good spots and if your midfielders aren't going to be getting on the ball in good spots, they're going to drop really deep. Sometimes Rooney drops real deep. So sometimes it doesn't look like a 5-4-1. Sometimes it looks like a you know, a 7-3-0. It it, it and like somehow, even with this, they're losing the numbers battle in central midfield as well. DC are a mess. They are a mess, and they are not safe. This is not a team that can sort of limp through to the end of September and say, oh, we'll just turn it on for the playoffs, because there might not be well, a playoffs. all of a sudden, Toronto FC lose, and they're kind of a mess as well, but oh. DC are only four points ahead of them with a game extra played. This could get real complicated real quick. For them, and it could get extra complicated because now there's rumors in England that Wayne Rooney wants to take off, maybe even go be a player manager at Derby County. Worked pretty well for Frank Lampard, just got to say that. Uh, Derby County did hire a manager, maybe come as an assistant. We'll talk about that a little bit more, perhaps with some Ola Kamara news in all the transfer notes that we have as well. In the Eastern Conference, I still think Atlanta have the highest ceiling. I don't really even think that that's much of a debate. Maybe NYCFC could get up in that conversation. They lost to RSL this weekend as well. But 72,400 and some packed into Mercedes-Benz. They did it again. It's a new MLS regular season attendance record. And all seemed kind of hunky-dory. Like, pity looked good. They've Own won. goal looked great. <laughs> Barco looked good. No, Joseph they, Martinez scored they've the They've won three game. and four. And you, you, they're scoring goals, and you understand why. But David pointed this out before we did the show. The Galaxy just come up, and they let you play in transition. If you're going to let Atlanta play in transition, they're going to look good. Yep. It, it, it played into their hands and also plays into PT's hands. Like, this was when he was at his best in South yep. America was just the, the one where he put Jonah Dos Santos on his backside in midfield. That's PT to a T when he's at his best. And so – I think it was a perfect game for Atlanta to be like, oh, yeah, we're good. This is what we do. This is fun. Also a good game to not have Leandro gonzalez Perez because you only had to deal with Antuna up top, no Zlatan. So that was a convenience for uh, for Atlanta. And, yeah, it played into their hands. It played to their game. And we talked about it last night. But I don't think Frank DeBoer has figured anything out. I just think they have talent. And the talent is starting to figure itself out. And Barco's on the field. This is his first start since he left for the U-20 World Cup. So they're going to be better with good players on the field than they are without them. And they're going to be better as they play together longer and longer. I don't know that it's rocket science and anything crazy has been solved, but the reason they have the highest ceiling is because they have the best talent. I didn't have a problem with uh, LGP and some of the guys coming out talking, saying, hey, we don't really like the way we're playing. We want to play a different style of, of game. To me, that's that's what a like a team that has won a championship that has real leaders comes out and says, and I know it's, it seems off because it, in some ways it's a little bit contradictory as far as the connection with the manager, but I'm getting the sense that this team is just like, we're going we're gonna to take this into our own hands and we have the most talent. We're going to go out there, play, the, play a more aggressive style. That's what they needed to be able to do it. And you see, look, I'm always going to bet on talent. <laughs> and this team, I think, has by far the most talent in the Eastern Conference. By far? Jo- I think by far, yeah, in my opinion. But I also said Carlos Vela was by far the best player in MLS at the beginning of the season. So Everybody you know? was like, oh, I don't know about that. Oh, <laughs> I said it's killing, not even close. It's like a headline and a hot take. And yeah, oh, I, I mean, up. I think it's pretty clear when you look at Atlanta's roster, they have the best roster. And Joseph Martinez up top, he's flying again. He could potentially even catch Carlos Vela in, in the goal scoring ranks by the end of the season. So I, I, I'm taking Atlanta, especially when you, it's so wide open in the East, when you look at the experience they have in the playoffs as well and I I really like this twist that they're having where the players are starting to take ownership of the performance. Uh, Atlanta rising up they were in first place for a hot second and then Philly via that 5-0 win jumped back above them 10 games left for Frank DeBoer and the players or whoever to figure this thing out and defend that MLS Cup title. LAFC okay anybody who thinks they're gonna win the Supporters Shield say aye. 
I, I, that's four of us. <laughs> I, is, yeah, I, won't, yeah. I didn't say it, but I won't be it's, told what to do. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I appreciate that. But you've, you've given your opinion nonetheless, yes. so we have the answer. Uh, I think they have a 14-point lead in the West, and I believe a 10-point lead in the Shield race on the Union. I mean, this is, this is theirs. The only way they lose this is if they just start, you know, stepping in their own. You know what, what I mean? What the was, only way they lose is if they really, like, maybe Carlos Vela, I, I'm not even going to say it. I'm just going to knock on the table right, right now. Like, so what I, was, I can't see a scenario. What was scary about this game against the Revs was they were in, like, second or third gear, and they played a team that was 11 unbeaten, and they won 2-0 on the road. Yeah. Like, this is this was Bob Bradley's nightmare, and they won 2-0. Yeah. So, <laughs> for Major easily. League Soccer, that's what's going on. Pretty easily. And it was like, you have to bring your A game to beat LAFC and hope that they bring their C minus game. The Revs brought like their B plus A minus game. The Revs actually played pretty well. Yeah. And LAFC rolled out like a C plus and they won two nil on their yeah. <laughs> the Secretariat at the Belmont. I mean, it's they're just they're just so much oh, better. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're just so much better than the rest of the league on a week to week basis. It's it's fun to watch. There's a reason why at All Star when you talk to all the players and say, "Yeah, hey, who do you watch?" You know, because we're all the ESPN Plus nerds out there, and like we got teams that we will flip on no matter what. Some of them a little bit more in like the dark recesses of our brain than others, but the one out in the bright lights is LAFC, and everybody wants to watch them for a reason. They keep rising up the table. That was not the most interesting thing that happened this weekend, though, in my opinion. Well, can we shout out Latif Blessing? Yeah, yeah, he got he got a little. Got, got, paid. Got, his. Got, yeah. got paid. Got paid. Got paid. I saw the well I saw the Absolutely. original game at the All Star game. So we'll just <laughs> we'll throw up a little respect for my guy Eddie Johnson and what he's doing right now. But the most interesting thing was these three phrases together: Prairie Dog Plague. Actually, the most interesting thing was just those three words. Yeah. Kai Kamara Hattie. Rapids win six three. And own goal rules the day. I mean, there were a lot of different phrases in there. But first of all, the prairie dog plague is... I, I can confirm from... Good job, Rapids, for keeping From extra time, safe. extra time legend Nick Fershaw lives out there now. Yeah. Prairie dog plague is real, man. It's as real as it gets. Listen, <laughs> I mean, I think what's we the sh- symptoms? We should take a moment here. Apparently, I I the know. mortality rate for prairie dog co- co- colonies, 100%. 100%. Yeah, like, once it gets in, prairie dogs are in trouble. Whoa. Wow. So, well, let's just take a moment to think about the prairie dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna make a Monty Python joke here. Doesn't f- doesn't feel doesn't as appropriate as it might. Yeah, don't have disrespect the Prairie Dogs. Yeah, look, I, I got a ton of respect for that, and I have respect for the Rapids for coming out and owning that one and making sure their fans were safe. But Kai Kamara got a hat trick. That's rarer than the Prairie Dog plague. Yeah, second in his career. <laughs> yeah. How is that a thing? It, he, How is that possible? I feel like he's had a million braces though. I, I feel like Kai has this thing where, like, if he scores one, he's like. Very likely to get the second, but then he almost and never gets the third. Gets the you want to know what the difference is? What? Fighting over those penalties. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He got the pen. That was yeah. that, you know? And, you know that's, that's, a that's a brace otherwise. That's a technically, point. he scored four in this one. <laughs> well, he almost <laughs> like a, scored five. I, I technically, I honestly, I don't know if you count this as a hat trick because you do have just the pure math. You have a minus mm, one on this. Right. Own goal, which, you know. Can I just shout out Kai for a second here? Because 123 career goals. Now he's fifth on the all-time list. Ten back of Jaime Moreno. Uh, who that, t- just that sentence right there? Impressive. That's incredible, yeah. Ten back of Jaime Moreno, who t- took like every penalty kick for, for DC United for about seven years. Uh, Eleven back uh, of Jeff Cunningham. Not going to catch those guys this year. But if he stays fit and stays healthy... He's got every chance of, of breaking into the top three and, and maybe even passing Landon eventually uh, and getting into the top two. He's now scored double-digit goals five straight seasons, age 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Oh, my God. You don't usually think of guys hitting their stride when they hit 30, but he's kept himself fit, and he's a better all-around player now. If you look at what he's done with this Rapids team – like, it's not just the goals. He's, he makes himself available as an outlet every single time they win possession. He takes a beating. He allows those wingers, and they got three or four of them now, to just get off of him into space. And he makes it easier for this team to hit that initial pass through the lines to start their transition. Kai's, have, other than 2015, this might be Kai's best all-around season. And I bang on all over all the time about play your kids, and I'm excited about the, that young Rapids core. I don't think that young Rapids core would look 
anywhere near as good if Kai Kamara wasn't having as unselfish and productive a season as he is. And I hope he gets to – because he's moved around too much. I hope he gets to stay in Colorado for a while. And I hope he gets to retire someday as a cult figure, a cult hero for that franchise. Because it's seven teams now, and he's done it again and again and again. (laughs) Give Kai his love. I actually Uh, love that he said unselfish there because I think Kai in the last couple years has also dispelled – maybe a thought or accepted sort of wisdom from his early years in the league, which is that he was a quote-unquote locker room cancer. He's an exuberant guy with a huge personality. Which is what you want from your center forward. All my experiences with Kai is that he cares. Sometimes he cares a whole lot, and that may shape the way that you're thinking about the way he's reacting to things. But there's nobody like him in this league. Nobody. He's 30 goals back of Wando right now. He's done 10 goals for five different teams. Can you name them in order? Okay. Sporting Kansas, Sporting City. Kansas City. That was his Columbus. first one. Columbus. Columbus. Vancouver. New, New England. England. Vancouver. Yeah. And now Colorado. See, here's my thing. I disagree with you. And I know that Kai doesn't want to move that much, but he's probably going to retire as a club legend for like four clubs, <laughs> yeah. which is sick. <laughs> yeah. Like, I hope he plays for everyone in MLS because every fan group that he's played for is like, we love Kai. Yeah. Kai's our guy. So when he does retire, I mean, that victory tour, my God. And when you he's going to be a home player. Every what's, what's the fit going to be on the victory tour? He scores a hat trick, <laughs> almost has two own goals, and he's got like the flower headband. Oh, looks like he came straight out of the like age of Aquarius. <laughs> you think about all the moments, too, and he's played. That's why all those clubs love him, too. It's not just off the pitch. Like, you're going to remember him from Vancouver dancing with Fonzie Davies and yeah. from uh, Sporting Kansas City with those teams going dancing, side, Chipotle, dancing, you know, yeah. experience. Yeah snow for the first time exactly. with the supporters. So to like, see him go to Colorado, it's like, yeah, this is what he does. Yeah, he goes around. But the he last piece you have to throw into the... I think he can hit a couple more teams. I, I'm the opposite. I think, he, <laughs> I think we got a couple more in him. I'd like to see him maybe get get a ring. That's the one thing I would Look, love to I, see. I, I said, yeah. of all the active players, he probably has the best chance because of how his body has held up, how he's taking care of his body. I mean, this guy at 34 was jumping over Audis last year <laughs> for fun. They're just like doing a photo shoot and he's like, ah, you know what? I can jump over that car. Like, what? I can't even... I can barely walk. I'm a year younger. I don't even play professional sports. There's no wear and tear on this body. If we be can't do it, that's a bar. Bar. Yeah, there's yeah. a little. He bit. does. He does seem like a like a maybe not this year, but maybe next year, like a prime this time of year trade oh candidate. God, where it's God. like, okay, we're you know we're the best team in the league. We know we're going to face bunkers in the playoffs. We need a we need a. We're going to end up crossing the ball 30 times in the playoffs. We need somebody who will get on the end yeah, of the the, the Dwayne Wade to yeah. Cleveland Clav- Cavaliers move. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. David West to the Warriors. I said, when I said I he could it. break the yeah. record, it was because I think he'll he'll have years more as a starter. But even years after that with huge value as a substitute as well. Congratulations to Kai Kamara. 123 goals. A big win for the Rapids. 6-3 against Montreal. Be careful a, putting Kai on the bench. <laughs> 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 I'm not coaching that team. I'm just talking about it from this chair right here. All right, before we get to transfer window and Aaron Long and Christian Pavone and Bojan Kirkic, okay. Uh, one quick riff. Let's try to cover some of the other things around the league. I'll get it started. Minnesota beat Portland, extended their uh, unbeaten streak to seven games. They did it via penalty kick late in the game. Eichel Parra with the header. Depending on your perspective, it was off Larry's Mabiala's arm. From my perspective, very clearly off his arm, right around it. the you elbow do region. Replay. Yeah, yeah, you can go watch it on YouTube. But that's my take. Adrian Heath called it dubious, and I call Adrian Heath one hell of a politician because he's about to have Giovanni Savarese back in the back room for some Pinot Grige. <laughs> he can't be coming out in the press saying, we deserve this win, that was ours. Portland should just be happy they got to play at Allianz Field. He's got to be political. I think he did a j- good yeah. job there. What I would do to sit in a room with Adrian Heath and Gio Savarese oh. and have a Triviento. That'd be oh, a little <laughs> Triviento? Delicious. That would be a good time. Delicious. What's your riff here, Dave? What's your one thing? Uh, I'm going to give a little shout-out right here. Columbus Crew SC, four games unbeaten, three of those on the road, a win at Red Bulls and then a tie at the surging San Jose Earthquakes. Didn't totally deserve it, but they played pretty well. And the young DP, Diaz, simply enough, is lightning down the way. So whether he's good or not over the course of the next few years, I don't know, but he's definitely fast. Eloy Room looks good. He does. He had a lot to do. You're not supposed to sign a keeper based upon a, a great performance right. in a tournament, but he's he's kept that, kept that energy going. And for what it's worth, I think it was Youngworth who said, Columbus, other than LAFC, Columbus is the best team we've played all year, which surprised me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Major League Soccer, everyone. Yeah, Doyle, your riff? Uh, RSL, 3-1 win over uh, NYCFC. NYCFC gets a mulligan for this one, playing without Maxi Morales, who is as essential to that team as, say, Ladero is for the Sounders. But uh, it's good work from RSL, who 
are still in the playoff hunt. I think they're sixth place now in the West. Uh, they need to take care of, uh, of business at home because they don't do well on the road. But their next few home games, Seattle, LAFC, Colorado. Don't laugh. I mean, that's a that's a... It's a big game. It's a rivalry game, and Colorado's playing well. San Jose, the Galaxy, and then they end with the Dynamo. So five They'll of earn the it. six They'll absolutely earn remaining it. home games. rsl has got a lot of work in front of them. Uh, right. Mike Pecky, by the way, was suspended for this one. If you haven't seen that news or read about that news, it's on MLSsoccer.com, uh, a result of some of his actions, unacceptable actions, after the League's Cup game uh, about a week ago. Little stats on that one. RSL was 0-8-2 when they gave up the first goal. NYCFC scored first in this game. NYCFC was 7-1-2. Coming into this game. Stats, baby. They mean nothing. Yeah, Ben, we don't even need you on this show. You Get out of my you face. You heard me. I know you're listening. Get out of this Jalen, what do you got before we move on to the transfer window? I'm going to riff a little bit on sporting and Seattle. I was at the stuck in the Phoenix airport last night watching with an <laughs> LAFC fan, by the way. Mm. Just pulled up in an LAFC hat, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's not weird. That's what they do. He lives in Boston. Very confusing. Uh, but anyways. He, when he met you, did he just did turn he, and raise the look up? Like well, that? he saw the back of my computer, actually, <laughs> and he was like, MLS, that's cool. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. And then I made him watch all four seasons of the movement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but and, re- and read my column. Right. I yes. didn't see you subscribe to oh, that YouTube page. Right actually, I had him watch the, the cat video from uh, Salt Lake. That's, he was I mean, that's done a lot of traffic. And that, that's, that's the gateway drug to Doyle's column. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we uh, I give Sporting a bunch of credit for going on the road and getting a big result that he desperately needed. A little bit of two wounded sides, I think. Um, Seattle missing, most notably, Ruiz Diaz this one. But I, I still think that Seattle is the second best team in the West. I'm just making bold predictions today, but I, I think they're right below LAFC. Of course, tied with San Jose and Minnesota uh, for that second pack. Yeah, which is Minnesota. Cool. Oh. Neither of those teams I would have expected sure. to be one at note this on point Minnesota, the by the way, 36 points in their last two seasons. Each season, they have 38 points now, and I think they have 11 games left. Mm-hmm. So Adrian Heath's like, yeah, I told you about that third season. I told you. I mean. <laughs> Take that victory lap, I guess. You might as well. Not a good performance from Seattle, but the thing I like about this team always is they come right out of halftime. They get an early goal from Jordan Morris. The response is there. They go down again late. They get another late one, almost tie it up at the the very death with Hedwala Buana and Jordan Morris getting the opportunity. So that's the point I always like. Uh, Schmetzer teams, no surprise. I, I still like Seattle, but... Big result. Credit to Sporting. All credit to the bouncers in Seattle. I think they did a really good job this weekend Mm. in and around the stadium. Uh, Let's talk about the transfer window right now. Uh, Aaron Long, he'd like to move, it seems, to what? Ligoon? Is that what it seems like? Well, the Premier League is. Uh, The Premier League? Ideally, would probably maybe could get the work permit. We don't know for sure on that one. Uh, His agent has come out repeatedly and said that the Red Bulls are holding him. At an unreasonable valuation of $15 million, you may have seen on the broadcast after the Red Bulls beat Toronto FC, Aaron Long holding court with Omar Gonzalez and Josie Alther are saying, yeah, the Red Bulls won't buy $15 million. That's crazy. Doesn't look like he's going to move if the Red Bulls have their way. What do we make of this little transfer? How'd brouhaha? you know what was going on in that conversation? Well, I just read lips. Mm. Yeah. They had a nice close up. Yeah, that's why you, every time yeah. I'm around Weeby, <laughs> right? Hand over mouth. You don't want me to see from afar. It's yeah, like, Kalen. You hear about that Weeby guy? Conversation guy straight can't. to my head. Straight to my head. Yeah. Did I mention that or that you have a We've kid? Covered no, that. I just yeah. Sounds out. like a classic tale of the player wanting to go play in the Premier League, and the co- and the and the club being like, "You're really good, man. We would, we would like to keep you here." So trying to drive up the prices as, as high as possible. Yeah. Right? That's, so that's what it's not about. a scientist. But. No, no, that's, <laughs> I think that's just play one on me, TV. It feels in the like movement. to me, it feels like the resolution here is probably there. Long is not going to make this move because right I don't. Now. Yeah, I don't foresee, and I could be crazy and wrong. And producer Anders says, "Look what Harry Maguire gets bought for. Like fifteen million is a drop in the bucket from Premier League teams. It's literally nothing." I, I just don't. I don't see that fifteen million number happening. And I think it feels more like not knowing the intricacies of this situation that that's just the Red Bulls saying we want to keep you. Uh, I think so. I think there's also an element to it of at this level when you're having this conversation, it's Red Bull Global along with the New York yeah, Red Bulls having this conversation, it, though, right? Yeah, because they like 
It's where they evaluate their players. Yeah. And so if West Ham's saying this guy want we want this guy so, to be so a starter on. for us. You're not saying this isn't you're saying that this is not Dennis Hamlet coming down on his own saying this is what we value at. This is the overall organization which yeah. includes multiple soccer clubs. I'm saying I'm saying one, we know that Ralph Ragnarok was in, I don't say that right, was in New York this week, which doesn't mean anything, right? everyone can pick up a phone and use an email. Uh, on top of that, I'm saying Red Bull Salzburg sold a twenty six year old fullback for thirteen point six eight million dollars to Borussia Mönchengladbach this window, right? So when you're talking about, well, age is a factor, it's a pretty similar profile, pretty similar age. Mönchengladbach in Germany, a lower profile league money-wise than what West Ham is in England. So I think for Red Bull, they're saying, if you think this guy's a starter in the Premier League, then this is the number. And it may not stick at that number. Obviously, you're going to go over so you can get negotiated down. But I think that that's the concept for them is this is where we value him and this is what you can do. And I'd like to think there'd be a decent conversation with Aaron Long saying, hey, look, we asked you to trust us three years ago when we signed you to a USL deal and told you you could be a great center back. Like we heard him talk on the Sal and Benny podcast, which everyone should listen to, about Jesse Marsh's conversation with Ico Parra. With Ico, with Ico Parra, Parra sorry. Yeah. Yeah, BSI, but not IBS. in, but not in name, only in uh, visual imagery. So, and, <laughs> okay, I, and they okay. said trust us, and he's been a defender of the year, and he starts for the U.S. national team. And I'd like to think there's a place where he can finish this year, and they can make a run at MLS Cup, and he can leave in the winter for a proper number, and maybe because of national team games, can get the permit to play in whatever country he chooses. I always took a little bit of issue with the idea of a club being like, we made we made you this, all of these things. It's like. Aaron did a whole heck of a lot too, and at a number that maybe wasn't always was real friendly. Highest. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, right. So yeah, and they were club rewarded him. That's that's fine, but I, I don't think he necessarily owes anything to the Red Bull. Uh, and I think I think it, I think this will happen. It's just I think it's just a matter of when. I'd like to see him get his opportunity because that is the part of being twenty seven where it does the urgency is now where he's, he doesn't really have multiple years to, to wait on this. I do wonder if maybe they can eventually work something out like what they had last year with Tyler Adams. And I know that was easier because that was within the Red Bull family, but you sell him in the summer, uh, but you get him on loan to the end of the year. And I know the Red Bulls aren't alphas in the title race like they were last year, but we all know this is MLS. You don't have to be an alpha in the regular season to necessarily make noise in the playoffs. He's also the most important player on this. He's their so team. important for them. They're the best back line in Major League Soccer. And I think, well, you could say Kamar Lawrence, that's fine. But he's a huge part of that. And so mm -hmm. if they're going to challenge for MLS Cup, it's going to come through yeah. him. Yeah. Tough decision. Tough decision. There's a little bit of push and pull right now between the Red Bulls, Aaron Long. You know, it's not a tough and decision. And his representation. I mean, uh, well, getting yeah, Christian getting Pavone jacked about Pavone. Christian Pavone. Yeah. Ooh. It's not watched, done yet. I watched it's this last yet. night, and I, I was like, Goss is yeah. – he was, he was making baby. David Beckham. Yeah, he was like – Okay, so here, here's I'm not going to steal your shot. Yeah, yeah, said, yeah, Hold me back. That. You did do that. Hold you, me back. You compared it to David Beckham. Yeah. Okay, it's a game-changing so signing. Quickly, quickly here. LA Galaxy, in case you your head has been under a rock or whatever. You don't go to MLS Reddit at all. Uh, right now it looks like – and this is, again, reports. This whole thing has been a crazy saga that it'll be 18 months of loan – for Christian Pavone, 23-year-old Argentine international Boca Juniors star, for it sounds like around $2 million fee and then a big fee to make that move permanent on the back end of it. And, of course, he would be reunited with uh, his manager and Guillermo Pero Chiloto from the Boca days here of late. So explain to me, why would this be a Beckham-esque Okay. Transfer. And what so, would it mean for the Galaxy? So for the league, we've seen the trend. Obviously, Almy Rowan was a big part of a guy who was bound for Europe that was coming to the United States, coming to MLS for the in-between part. But last year's Copa Libertadores final, one of the biggest games in the history of South America, the two biggest players on the field were P.T. Martinez and Christian Pavone. And both of them could be in Major League Soccer six months later, seven months later. And for the LA Galaxy, off the field, Almy Rowan, Vela, all the biggest signings that have changed the perception of this league over the last few years have not come from the LA Galaxy. And they were the ones who signed David Beckham first. They were the ones who signed Robbie Keane. They're the club of Landon Donovan. So this puts them back on that pedestal of, yeah, we hear every rumor of every but, but player. But don't they have Zlatan? Yeah, for sure. But that's a guy who didn't play for Manchester United and came on a free. Not that he's not good, okay. but the perception in the transfer okay, so market you're saying the of type, where they the stand. Type you could of tell, transfer, the type of move. You could tell how jacked Goss is because he's just beating the hell out of the table, table right now. Mashing. So on top you of all like Khrushchev, take off your shoe. On yeah. top of all that, this is a guy who's entering his prime, not even in his prime yet, who there was you know, the idea coming out of the World Cup that he was going to play for Arsenal or Barcelona. 
and now he's going to play for the LA Galaxy. He's turning 25. He's a player that you're going to sell on at some point, but he's going to change your team on the field. I think he's going to help continue to positively change the perception of the team off the field as well as the league. And if it all goes right, you're going to have a guy starting in Champions League knockout game who just played for the LA Galaxy in a couple of years and hopefully has won a couple championships. He will not be 24 until next January, just FYI on his age there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, Doyle, about the player himself, what it might mean for the Galaxy on the field, a second fiddle or a equal fiddle perhaps to Zlatan? I think like, he's a second fiddle. Okay. Um, I, I like Pavone a lot. and he like, That's a hell of a fiddle to be a yeah. equal <laughs> to Zlatan. He's got, a, he's got 11 caps for Argentina. Uh, you know, he's played... I don't know, 80 times for for Boca, something like that. As you said, in, in Copa Libertadores, he, he is a uh, an attacking player. I mean, he's primarily a winger. I think that's where he would be best used, certainly in the setup that Scalotto uses. That's where Scalotto used him when they were at Boca together. Uh, he he looks the part. He always passes, he pretty much always passes the eye test. He always looks like he could just break a game open. Productivity isn't always there. If you look at his numbers, he, he's not putting up a ton of goals and assists and never has uh, throughout his career. Um, the talent's there. I, I'm, this feels like a, like a PT signing um, where everybody assures talk me. Talk me off PT now. Everybody, I'm still in on PT. everybody assures me that he's going to come and take the league by storm and just change. I mean, I could go back and look at some of the tweets that people were sending me when PT was signed about how he's easily the best player who's ever played in MLS at any era, any age. And like, woo, maybe not. Oh boy. Maybe he's the fourth best player on his team. Um, Shot in Freud in your eyes right there was just like shining through. So, like, oh, that's funny. I, yeah. I'm, no, I'm, <laughs> I, I hope the Pavone thing gets done for all the reasons you said um, and maybe for a couple others as well. So for on the field, winger who's super athletic, can break guys down and puts in decent crosses. So Zlatan will like him. Yeah. I think that will be one of the nice pieces for them is it'll fit together. That's a pretty important piece, it seems like. Sure. When you play with Zlatan, uh, what do you think, Kalen? There's no issues with productivity with Ola Kamara in Major League Soccer. Three seasons, more than 14 goals every single season, basically a goal every two games for the crew. And then the Galaxy, he sort of coexisted with Zlatan, and now it looks like he may coexist for however long, depending on those rumors, with Wayne Rooney at DC United. Steve Goff of the Washington Post, who you should generally always trust on these things, says that this is going to happen from Shenzhen, where... Ola moved in just February for around two and a half million, which would be the second most paid by DC behind Paul Areola. Is this the right move for them? What does it mean? First of all, six months in China sounds awesome. <laughs> Shout out to Ola. He's got he's doing it. Right. Yeah, well played. Uh, but I think he's going to be great for DC. I mean, we already know what he can do in MLS. He was even productive in a system that was basically a nightmare for him <laughs> in with the Galaxy. And then when you add in the wing play that DC already has with Areola, that's where. Ola Kamara is at his best, is in the box. It, he was basically a, a, a better version of Giassi, a little bit more productive version of Giassi in and around the box, but both have very similar movement, understanding of the ball. I think uh, Ola is going to be fit great with this team, really. I mean, he's, he's a guy that I think can take this team to the next level because when you see Wayne, the way he likes to play, and let's just say it's Wayne and Lucha, we don't, there's always rumors about these two, but they both like to drop off and get the ball a little bit tuck underneath, get some space, have some freedom to move about. They have the wing play to give them balance out wide, but he would be the guy at the very top of the puzzle to be able to just bang the ball in the net. To drive center backs back into the box as well and give that space for Lucho and Wayne yeah. on the top of the 18, which is where they ultimately want to be. Yeah, and I, I thought this was coming for a while, not necessarily Ola, but another forward. This team is just dying to be a, a 4-4-2 or you know, a, a 3-5-2. Um, the, the sort of intricate stuff that they were doing the second half of last year, that's gone. Teams either figured it out or the guys just aren't as sharp or they're just not. So like when that happens, I think the right idea is to simplify. And there's nothing simpler than putting in a number nine who just consistently scores goals. Just takes the weight off of everybody else. I know you're a big Nacho guy, Dave. Are you a big Bojan Kirkic guy? Because uh, he is reportedly coming to Montreal, and I am a little bit underwhelmed. He has not played for Barcelona since 2011. So all those Why memories that, that you have, just the memories. That's how people remember him. They're like, he's Barca. He's early days. He's at their peak. We played like 20 times for Stoke sure, City. Sure, but in he the also Champo. started in the Champions League. Played, yeah, yeah he sure. played in the okay. Premier League. Okay, but it's been a while. Uh, yeah, me and him have a lot of past tense. Me yeah. and him have Sell been. Sell me on uh, Bojan to the impact. 
Uh, he's the best player to play alongside Nacho Piatti in the attack, maybe since he's been in Montreal. Oh, stop. Alejandro oh, stop. Silva? Yeah. Okay, one guy Laram for Jamiley. one year. I would take this new guy. But, Jamiley, but here's the thing with Jamiley. They have tighter on the team. Yeah. So Jamiley, like, this is a third piece that didn't exist with any with those two. This is a second piece that didn't exist this year. Like, this is just more talent. The point is, Montreal hasn't sold anyone yet. It sounds like Nacho Piatti's staying at least for this year. So they've just gotten better, which is rare. A lot of times you see a move like this, it's to replace that guy. So that's my sell is Montreal Impact have one more guy now, and they're a better team than they were yesterday. Are okay. they? I'll take that so. I'm all in on him. Oh, really? Whoa. I, like, I'm excited. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Here's this our side of the moment. table. <laughs> Curmudgeons against I know. Uh, I, I think you guys are underrating him. I, I think he's going to be 16-17. He had three goals in 11 games. 17-18. He had a combined one goal in 17 games. He needed Remy Gard. 18-19 in the championship. Um, he had one goal in 23 games. Oh, maybe he's the next Joe Mason. <laughs> he's always hurt. Shots that's fired. the one thing I say. He's always hurt. Oh, that's good. He's had a lot. Well, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this, this signing should be great. But all right, all right. Look, you know, wait, wait and see. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. we'll come back. We'll Bank come back around. We'll come back. You spike it in Doyle's I'm, face. I'm, and I'm, my hyped, face. I'm hyped on this. One. I think this. He could be. I think he could not just be good. I think he'd be great. I, I think that's a possibility as well. I am very, very interested to watch to see if that possibility comes true. This is not done yet. We shall see. The transfer window closes on Wednesday. I think the Sounders are probably going to be. You would think. Other than some of these moves that are rumored, but maybe not sealed, the most active team. They haven't really made a ton of moves here. Uh, Ariaga came in in the other window. He is now playing for Roman Torres, who has Sorry, the PEDs. I'm already out. envisioning having a debate on Match Day Central over best duo, Fernandez and Valeri, <laughs> Boyan and Nacho. I'm, I'm just saying, when it happens, Doyle, I'll be there. All right. Boyan and Nacho does have a good ring to it. I'm not going to lie about that one. Uh, I mean, you know, Sassini maybe from Malaga. Young. I think Uruguayan defensive midfielder linked yeah. with the Sounders. You know, there's also that open DP slot they could go out and fill. Maybe that would be Sassini. I don't know. But look, Wednesday, that is the close. So pay close, close attention. Uh, also this week, US Open Cup, yeah, excuse me, US Open Cup semis. We have a little bit of time left, so I was trying to rush, and I probably shouldn't. Who Skipped needs to win right it right over Andrew Gutman. I, yeah, my sorry, goodness. Andrew Gutman. My bad. Going to Cincinnati in case you didn't know. Lucas Venuto <laughs> also Jans. left Vancouver. I skipped over that one as well. So with no disrespect, guys, it's what happens. We start cutting for time. Uh, Atlanta versus Orlando, Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, ESPN Plus. Minnesota, Portland, the rematch from this week in 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Plus. Uh, are we all in agreement that Orlando needs this the most out of any team? Yes. The most. But not by far. Minnesota just a tad behind them, you would for say? For sure. Okay. Minnesota's making the playoffs this year, though. Yeah, agreed. But... They've been really bad for a couple of years. Orlando getting a trophy. Orlando so. need this by far, okay. by far. This is a this is a this is like a, a signpost performance, signpost victory. If they beat Atlanta in the U.S. Open Cup semifinals, who they haven't ever beaten, I think we should this remind is, our listeners. This is this is like. If this happens, this feels like the type of thing where you know you look back after ten years and you write the history of Orlando City and you plant the flag and you say, "This is when we really became an MLS team because we've been struggling the four and a half years before that." You can watch these on ESPN Plus. Uh, we will have full coverage on Thursday. Reaction from both of these games. Love the US Open Cup. We'll definitely be watching these two nights. Uh, before we get to the mailbag, I just have to ask you what you think about Inter Miami. And Gennaro Gattuso, outside the jokes that we had off the top about Dave fighting him and being <laughs> just bloodied to a, a pulp, <laughs> I would assume that's not going to happen, but, you know, I've assumed a lot of things and I've been proven wrong. Listen, man, um, yeah. I answer the call when the call gets put out. So this is the rumor. Jorge Moss says, we're trying to get someone who can commit here for a period of time and leave his fingerprints on our team, who has coached at the highest level and who has played at the highest level and who will, quote, fit an attacking style. The attacking style part, maybe not. Gattuso's hallmark, he has coached at the highest level with AC Milan. It didn't last particularly long. I would a little assume generous calling AC Milan the highest level. Well, oh. that's just for, that's just that's for Thomas yeah. back in the production room. Thomas... <laughs> Don't listen to him. Everything's okay, okay? I was already jumped out the window. Yeah, he's, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, yeah, it would be – I'm here for it. As a, Again, you often say, as a narrative person, I'm 100% here for it. It seems a little risky. Well, so let's start here. They've made two signings. It sounds like they're on the verge of a third. All super young South American players. Is that Katusa? Like, is that the coach you think of when you're like, this is the guy I want to develop these guys? 
Donald's looking at me like, yeah. what am I saying? <laughs> you want me to answer that? Yeah. No, no. I, I mean, attack no. style. Is that the coach you think of? No. So definitely played at the highest level. Definitely coached at the highest level. A lot of grit. Yeah. Everyone knows his name. Yeah. So. I just, is, is Gattuso's Miami going to be as stylish as maybe that market, that team, that club is, is marketing itself as? It needs it. It needs it. I really think it does. I think Atlanta, had they played like the, if they started out of the blocks, like humdrum, yeah, that yeah. would have been much now, more difficult. And now they're getting 72,000 because they have a reputation of being like high-flying, goal-scoring ballers. Did you guys see all the supporters at, at Orlando at the All-Star game? Yeah. That was cool. It was. I didn't know. I mean, it's like it's one of those things. The club does, I don't know, like LAFC fans before it existed. You're like, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> so that's the one thing. When you talk about uh, the off-field profile of a club, I don't know that you would have put Bob Bradley in with L.A. glitz and glamour, right? But he's built the team in the image of what that club wants to be seen as. So Gattuso doesn't fit a lot of the things we're talking about. International. He but, resonates. Yeah. He's a high-profile player, high-profile person, and uh, maybe in the conversations they've had with him, he said, this is how I see the game, if I could build a team yeah. from the ground up, and this is how I had I a different pressure at Milan, a yeah. different situation. I mean, situation. that, that they, club they has were, been broken. Yeah, they were in a financial, That a mentality financial works spot. in MLS, too. I mean, the, the margins in MLS are smaller. You can't just go out and buy the best team, necessarily. You, you can buy some top players, and I expect Inter-Miami to make some big signings, but when you're Dealing with a game of margins and in a league of very tight margins, I mean, look through the Eastern Conference where they're going to be joining. Look through next. the Western Conference, two through ten. It's the exact same. Exactly. It's like so eight points. I think that mentality that he has, that experience, and then some of the tactical nuance, mm-hmm. I, I think he could be really successful in him. So you're – all right. So right now, Kalen's going to be managing – Inter Miami with Gennaro Gattuso and Bojan. <laughs> Starting at the number 10 position. Let's go. Well, you need to Kamara up top. Yeah, after he proves himself. Well, there's the also impact, been proof of this of this working before where before you'd say, oh, the foreign manager is not going to understand the league. It's it's going to be too complicated, the rules, all the changes, uh, the restrictions. But we've seen it work with Patrick Vieira, with so many p- managers come in. Almeida, players, coaches that have, don't have a great experiences in MLS, but have found success in the right format or the right support system around him. I think Vera is a good reference there. Almeida obviously had experience, but also yeah. Paul McDonough knows. Oh, Tata. The, yeah, yeah, but Paul McDonough was one of the guys that helped bring in Tata. Mm-hmm. So, Great. And he's worked exactly. with him, so he should understand it. All right, let us know what you think of Gattuso and Inter-Miami. We're running out of time here. We do have the mailbag. 401 mls Extra time at MLSsoccer.com. Hit me with it. Michael Zanitis says, my daughter and I are longtime Impact supporters. We were at Stad Saputo for Dragwa's first game. We go to, on a summer trip for an Impact home game every year. I was born and raised in Montreal, but we live in Calgary. My daughter was born here in Calgary. We were excited when CPL was announced, and I'm a season ticket holder for the Calgary. Where do our loyalties lie on Wednesday night for the Canadian Championship game between Calgary and Montreal? What jersey do we wear on the return leg in Calgary? What's the panel's view? Uh, Karma is probably going to give me a heaping helping down the line. But I say split your household. I <laughs> say yep. split it right down the middle because that is – I mean, look, she, your daughter was born in Calgary. She goes to, to Calgary games. She is a, as much a season ticket holder as you are. Get her in that shirt, man. Have her support her home team, the one she's growing up with. You rep Montreal. You go back and forth. You have a little banter. You have some bragging rights. You have somebody who maybe gets upset at breakfast about something. So what happens when Cam after the game? What happens when Cam Cam goes to Mizzou? Well, that's what I'm saying. Karma's going to come back and okay. really bite me here. But Mizzou <laughs> has an awful journalism school. That's as our true. producer Anders Arhus knows, it is just like it, the dregs. Cut the rate. amount of youth Jim Edmonds jerseys I've already bought for Cam. Oh my god. <laughs> My apartment's well, overflowing. I, I have a chimney in the backyard, so now I have a lot of kindling. <laughs> How's he? He's a Red Bull fan, though, right? How's he going to uh, take he's it? He's not if, a Red Bull fan. He has a Red Bull jersey. Okay. He's been to a Red Bull game. But if I'm, Long gets moved, does Cam's heart break? How's he going to take it? He what seems like a big. Have you what had that of, conversation? What kind of price him? tag does Cam put on Aaron Long? I don't know. Probably like 15 Matchbox cars. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. He, that's a lot. <laughs> he has a lot that's more massive. than that, but that's a pretty <laughs> sizable chunk. Those are all extremely important to him. Anything else? Split your family. That's my advice. I don't know if we can anymore. I think we might be done on this. <laughs> That's one. it. Okay, that might be else? the closing salvo. Really? You just told someone to split their family. Well, not like you know. You're still family. You know, you still love. Are each you? Other. No, I mean, Are if you? he's an Impact fan and she's a Calgary fan and Calgary wins, like she's grounded for a month. No. Is it like what you just take? Unless it. she over, unless she overdoes, maybe the winner. overdoes. Yeah, maybe. the lower division making history over Montreal. How could you overdo that? That's a good point. 
Fact. So you she can't be grounded. This is by how, the rules. This is our parents. Yeah, by right? the rules. Everything Look. by the seat of your pants, Weeby. Yeah, Come on. exactly. I'm like a river. I'm just flowing. I'm finding my path as I go. Didn't, I, didn't expect that yeah. one. He's going to have a purple mohawk by the time he's five. At this <laughs> well, if he does, then I'll have done it. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Look. Sounds like anarchy in that. That's it from us. I guess that is <laughs> where we're going to here. We will be back on Thursday to talk Open Cup, to talk about the close of the transfer window, to preview the weekend, week 23 coming up. Playoff races heating up. If you have any thoughts on anything we talked about today, 401 206 MLS. That's the hot take hotline. Extra time at MLSsoccer.com is the email. Dave generally reads through those. Yep. So you want to appeal to Dave. That's how you get on the show. I mean, just ask good questions or send good yeah. comments. There you go. That's all. That works, works too. Dunk on Weeby. Yeah. yeah. That also works. All three I usually enjoy good. that. Not too much of the Weeby stuff because then I have to talk about Weeby too much. Right. Even if it's right. negative. Then it feels self indulgent. And now this feels self indulgent. And we're going to get out of here. Goodbye. Thanks, Doyle. Thanks, Goss. Thanks, Galen. We'll see you on uh, Thursday, everybody.